Okay, so how do you write content that actually ranks on Google? Content that actually ranks keywords of your site on the first page of Google. It's gonna be a long video, but trust me, it's gonna be worth it. So the very first thing before I dive into any strategies, any like tricks, hacks, is you need to nail down, and it's a very boring subject, but it's very important, keywords, right? Keywords, because keywords are what people are searching for on Google or Bing or any other search engine to find your site. And so why is this important? Again, because people search for them and that's how they find your site. Now, it's not just about people finding your site. It's about the right people finding your site. And that's the biggest thing people usually get wrong. Let me go over and exactly why that is. So when you rank, let's say again, and again, I give this example every single time, but it's the best example I can give. Let's say my business is a store that repairs iPhones, okay? People come in to my store to repair their iPhone. Again, this example can be applied to any business, any niche, whether it's software, uh, services, physical products, this applies to any niche. So take this and try and apply it to your business. So my business repairs iPhones, right? And again, I have this is my, my physical storefront, okay? And of course, I have a website, right? A beautiful website with a beautiful image, right? My products here or services, right? And again, people find my site online. Again, people come to my site, right? By typing stuff on a search engine, right? With the different search results, right? They can type in here, uh, how to repair an iPhone or how much does it cost to repair an iPhone or um, price to repair an iPhone, right? They type this in. Ideally, our site ranks first, people click it and they go to a site and go to a store, of course, to pay us to fix their iPhone for them, okay? Now, the thing here is that not talking yet about the content itself, talking about the keywords, right? People can type in here stuff like, for example, how to repair my iPhone. Or they can type in stuff like, for example, where to repair my iPhone or how much does it cost to repair my iPhone? Now, the thing get a, get a listen here is that you wanna focus on the types of keywords that have the highest buying intent. And I'll draw this matrix here again, which I draw often. Again, with that in the Y axis has the, what we call BI, which is buyer intent, sorry, by B I buying intent. And the X axis has the traffic and as well as the competition because usually the higher the traffic, the higher the competition, okay? And so people searching for how much, uh, or sorry, people searching for how to repair an iPhone, we can assume that most of them wanna do it themselves. They don't wanna pay someone to do it for them. While people searching for where or how much, we can assume again that they most likely wanna do, wanna hire someone or wanna pay someone to do it for them. So the buying intent is much higher here than here. And again, even if this had 10,000 searches per month, right? And the combination of these two had only 1,000, right? We'd still wanna go here because out of these 1,000, I don't know, 100, 500 people are interested in our services. While someone's searching for how to repair an iPhone, out of these 10,000, maybe one or two or 10, I don't know, smaller percentage, want to actually pay us to do it for them. And again, this applies to any niche. Again, you have to focus on the buying intent because there's a ton of keywords with super high search volumes, but again, people search for it, but they're not interested in buying something. They're not predisposed to buying something, right? For example, another example, if you're a software company, right? And let's say you have a competitor, a keyword that's amazing to target that has a very, very high buying intent is competitor alternative. For example, let's say I use a software called uh, A, okay? Uh, sorry, my software is called A, right? And my competitor software is called B, right? I want to rank my site for B alternatives or alternative to B, okay? B versus A. So again, keywords that mean people already know about software B and they're looking for an alternative. Hopefully this makes sense, okay? And these are very high buying intent keywords because again, you're targeting keywords, people are searching for alternatives to a software they're currently paying for. And again, we can assume that these people are more predisposed to spending money. First, because Again, they already, they already invest and buy the software. And second, because they're looking for an alternative. They're looking to buy something else because this doesn't satisfy them enough, okay? So hopefully this, hopefully this makes sense and this example applies to any single business, any single niche, and I urge you to do this exercise. Now, the second part of this exercise is going and drawing this matrix. And once you have all your keywords, like a list of keywords, is going out and placing them here. And you do not go for keywords here, nor here. Why? Because these two quadrants have low buyer intent. This one has low traffic, low buyer intent. I mean, it doesn't make sense to target this. And this has 
low buyer intent, high traffic, high competition. So not only are these keywords hard to rank for because there's a ton of traffic, ton of competition, but they also have a low buying intent. So just mostly a waste of time. So you wanna go for keywords here and here in these two quadrants that have high buying intent, high traffic and low traffic. Okay, so this is where you wanna go for. Again, this is the very, very first step on writing content that actually ranks on Google is firstly figuring out the keywords, okay? Now, the second part is the actual generation of the content. And to put it simply, right, again, let's say, again, this is a blog post we're writing, okay? The single biggest thing, and I guess the most obvious, is writing content that satisfies the user's search intent. So, I mean, obviously, if someone's searching for best dog colors or best indoor plants, an article about indoor plants is going to rank, right? Not an article about cars, okay? That makes perfect sense, right? So again, we wanna make sure that our articles, again, after choosing the right keywords and after, after placing them here, we wanna produce content that satisfies the user's search intent. If they're looking for and for targeting the keyword best indoor plants, we wanna make sure that our article has the best and most information for the best indoor plants. So again, for example, for the indoor plant niche, again, this is a very visual niche. So again, you might wanna have a featured image, right? Well, also what you wanna have is a table of contents, right? Also, and I'll stop after these three, a key takeaway section. All this before you start writing your article. Why? Because again, our goal is to give the user the best information and as fast as possible. And you might notice this, that for example, when you type in Google, uh, uh, what's the eye of the Eiffel Tower? Google doesn't give you a, a long blog post, they just have it up there for you, right? Because they wanna provide their users with the best info, the most accurate info, as fast as possible. If you type in uh, what, what time is it in the USA, whatever, they give you the hour. You don't have to click any search result, okay? That same principle applies when you're writing these articles. You wanna give the best information as fast as possible. And the way you, have to, you can do this is, instead of having them read and scroll through the article to find your information, just give them here the key takeaway section, a table of contents they can open to see what you talk about in the article. And I'll show you here a quick example of how this looks like real quick. And before I dive into this again, let me just go here. This is for the uh, dog grooming niche. So here, this article talks about how to groom a golden retriever. And it gives you, before you even start the article, it gives you, okay, what it is, the table of contents there. You can see what we talk about. It is interactive, so you can click and go to, that, go to that section. But also, it has a key takeaway section. So I don't waste the user's time. They can come here and see, okay, does this article talk about what I want? And if it does, okay, I keep scrolling, right? But don't try to hide your information down there. Don't try to be shady. Just give them anything you can, everything you can as fast as possible. That's the very first thing. Because again, Google and wants the best for its users and you need to give, the best thing is again, giving the information fast and the most accurate way. Now, again, for this niche, the uh, again, the indoor plant niche, because that's the niche we're going with, it is a very visual niche, of course. So if this is an article about the best indoor plants, you wanna write it, have a proper content structure with in article images, for example, an image, image for each plant, maybe have a video, right? A video going over the best plants, maybe even you talking why they're good, why they're bad, why you should get this one, not that one, right? The pros and cons. Um, also, support your information, have links, right? have links, for example, to Wikipedia, have links to authoritative sources in the plant niche. I don't know any, but for example, if this were to be an article about finance, we'd link out to Bloomberg, we'd link out to TechCrunch, we'd link out to Investopedia, so all these authoritative sources in the niche. So combat your claims, and if you say, this is the best plant because it is very good in low light, link, link to an article or link to a source where it proves your claim. So don't do claims without um, evidence. And if, for example, if it is a claim based on your experience, document and explain your experience. So I tried this and I found this is the best plant for this because of that, okay? And again, I'm speaking about plants, but this applies to any niche, okay? Same thing, after external links, you're gonna add, wanna add internal links. So linking out maybe to, if, for example, I'm, I'm guessing if you're typing, uh, writing articles about uh, indoor plants, you have a shop, a Shopify store, for example, that sells um, plants. So have links to your Shopify products that sell your plants or maybe even gardening supplies, right? Have links, for example, if you're a plumber, to your service or to your contacts page. Have link to other blog posts of yours, right? Because when you produce a multitude of blog posts, right, they are not independent things, right? If you're producing a bunch of blog posts in the gardening niche, you wanna make sure that they interlink between each other in a way that makes sense, right? So interlink the posts, link out to previous posts you've written in the past, external link to authoritative sources, add images, add videos, add links, add bullets, add tables, when it makes sense, right? For example, here, I'll show you an example, um, right? To make it easily digestible, you're gonna wanna add bullets and tables again when it makes sense, right? Again, your goal is to have and show the info to the user 
as quickly as possible and in the most easily digestible way, okay? So again, that's the, I guess, second step to it. And next thing is that um, this, again, is all on-page SEO. And SEO has three main pillars. If you go here and draw just SEO here, SEO, which stands for search engine optimization, again, which is, that is the, the process of ranking sites higher on Google, has three main pillars, on-page, off-page, and technical SEO. Technical SEO is the schema markup, your site speed, meta tags, all this boring SEO stuff, right? Off-page SEO essentially is backlink building, building links, how to build links and all that. We have a couple of videos on the channel. I think the, the last one is on how to build links, so check that out. I'll leave a link down below in the description. If I forget, let me know, right? That's off-page SEO. And then on-page, that's anything and everything that happens on the site, which essentially is the, the content, right? Your blog posts, okay? How you write them, uh, the, uh, what you say in them, um, the, how the way they're constructed, right? The, anything that, and everything that happens on the site, okay? And these two, keyword research and content generation, are the on-page SEO. Now, to write content that actually ranks on Google, this is the very first step, right? Because SEO has three pillars, you don't want to neglect link building and you don't want to neglect technical SEO because you can have the best content in the world and it can rank to some extent, but to push it up to the top position, you need to tackle these pillars too. And again, there's a video down below in the description on how to build links and there should be some videos here on also on technical SEO as well. If I forget, just remind me down below, comment that I forgot and I'll send you the, the link for the for the for this stuff because uh, it's very, very important because you cannot do SEO, you cannot rank sites on Google first without tackling these two um, pillars. Now, you can automate the on-page SEO, right? The, the article writing with AI. And because I, I just showed you all this, right? And the reality is that before AI, right? If we were to draw this little ladder right here, before AI, we used to have to do all of this manually. Let's call the very last step here, success, money, okay? We used to have to do the Q research, okay? So figure out, okay, just like I showed you here, right? Do the Q research, uh, figure out what people are searching for, the buying intent, categorize it all here. It takes so much time, right? Q research, then the content writing, right? Then figuring out, okay, uh, on this big wall of text, where am I gonna add images? Where do I, do I source the images? Same, same thing, sorry, same thing for videos. Then links, right? Where am I gonna link out to? Where am I gonna interlink out to, right? So all this took so much time. And the thing is that with AI, you get to skip ahead of the line, right? You get to do all this manually because what you see here, all this, right? This is all done with AI. There's even an in-article video down here, right? That's tailored to what the, the content is about, okay? There's links, as you can see here, links to products, to uh, external sources, all done manually for you, automatically for you, sorry. So again, instead of you going up the steps, all one by one, one by one, just skip ahead of the line and leverage AI, which AI essentially is, is a technology. And again, I give this example every single time I do this, but think about AI as a wrench, right? AI is a tool. Because yeah, you can tighten up a bolt with your hand or you can just use a wrench. It's faster and it's done easily. You can tighten up more in a shorter period of time. And that's exactly what AI is. AI is a technology applied in the real world or in the, or, and also in the uh, internet world that you can leverage to do stuff faster, skip out of the line and skip out of all the people that are not leveraging AI, right? Because again, you take so much time to write all this. You take so much time to find the images, to source the best places to link out to, right? These are irrelevant, right? Not just some random stuff, okay? This is actually a dead link, but this one, for example, right here, uh, let me see here, okay? So it would take you so much time to figure out, okay, is this a good link, a good article that I can link out to? Okay, if it is, copy this, go to your WordPress editor and paste it in and add the link. Then if you have to figure out, okay, where in this article I'm gonna add it. So again, you get my point. It takes so much time and with AI you automate all this stuff. And you can just click here to post it straight, straight to your site or you can just click next, post one, click next, post one, or you just click here, post all. You're gonna post all three to your integration, okay? Now, you can use ChatGPT, but the thing is that ChatGPT doesn't add images, doesn't add links, does not interlink all your articles between each other, right? And also one thing that's really cool about this software is this right here, knowledge base. What this is, is it allows you to produce brand tailored content. So essentially in knowledge base, it's all about your brand. And your brand has uh, your website, right? Has your LinkedIn page, has for example, any talks, text documents, any audio documents, etc. All these, right? These are brand assets. And what you do when you connect journalist AI with your brand, you're giving journalist AI, you're giving the, the, the AI context about your brand, right? So it's able to produce brand tailored content. That is, that is non-generic AI content 
content that uses your own brand's tone of voice, your brand's mannerisms, your own brand's images. So again, non just bland generic AI content. So it's really, really powerful that we can do this with it. And to generate content, it's quite simple. Just go here to generate articles. There's all this stuff right here to generate the content. This is the input you give to the AI, right? And then just click generate. It's quite simple, right? The input down here, choose how many articles you want. Choose if you want videos in the articles, if so, enable this. Choose if you want images, right? You can have AI images or regular images. Um, it's very set up external linking, internal linking, the structure, right? You can even add a call to action, which is pretty cool. For example, let's say, for example, you have an article about uh, gardening supplies, right? And you have a Shopify store that sells gardening supplies. If you add a link here to your Shopify store URL or to a specific product, we'll add an extra custom section down here that tries to persuade people, essentially a call to action to sell in your products. So again, this call to action will make sense according to the whole context of the article. None of this is random. You can enable disable all these sections. You can select the article length. Uh, you can uh, also enable disable all this. You can connect this to the web so that the content that you produce is up to date. This is where you select your brand so that again, the content that's produced is brand tailored. Uh, speaking of content, you can select from over 150 different languages, it's pretty cool. Uh, you can select target country, creativity levels uh, down here with this uh, thing right here, tone of voice, point of view, formality, custom instructions to the AI. You can include certain keywords. And by the way, speaking of language here, we have a pretty cool case study because it, it tends to be easier to rank sites on the non-English Google. So for Portuguese, Spanish, Italian, so all these non-English speaking languages. And we have this case study right here from this uh, multi-million dollar company that actually uses the software. They're called Rava, they're a, a fintech company that actually bought a bank for 35 million euros a couple months ago. And what they did was they entered the Portuguese market and started producing content using AI in Portuguese, using the software, and they grew, right? These are all numbers. They grew quite fast. As you can see here, the traffic and the number of organ, or, organic keywords, sorry, rank in Google, they skyrocketed. I'll, I'll, if, I, if I forget, I'll leave a link down below in the description for this one. But this is, this is sorry, the, the case study. I'm speaking too fast because I, I want to pack as much value into this as I can. So sorry. But yeah, this is a case study of how they did it. But essentially, they're targeting the, the markets where there's a lot of demand for this type of content, but not enough supply. And this tends to be the case in the non-English speaking markets. That's why it's easier to rank sites on the non-English speaking market. So that's pretty cool that you can do this with this. And finally, up top, this is the generation mode. You can generate articles based off of titles, keywords, descriptions, or a keyword monitor. And this is where the cool things come in because if you go here to keyword monitors, if you add your site, add your target country, add your language, the AI will give you a list of keywords, right? With the current monthly searches and difficulty, then you can, then you can have the AI produce content based off of these keywords. Then you can also have it indexed in Google and post it to social media. So essentially what this does, right, is you connect the AI with your site. By the way, your site can be anything you want. If you go here to integrations, you can integrate with WordPress, Shopify, Ghost, Wix, Webflow, Blogger, Zapier, or even external, external API. What, it does, what this does again is you go here, you connect the AI, journalist AI, with your site. It does the keyword research. Then it does the content generation based off of the keyword research you did. Then the content publishing, automatic. Then the content indexing. And once the posts are all published to your site, it can also do automatic social media syndication. So syndicating it to your LinkedIn page, to your Twitter page, which is now called X, to Facebook, right? All of these done automatically. And you can have this in the back running on autopilot if you want. If you go here to autoblogs, new auto blog, you can set it up so that there's a blog automatically generating and publishing content, however many articles you want, every single um, month, weekday, 12 or six hours. Most people just do five, so five every day, so Monday through Friday. And again, you have these auto blogs running in the back producing content. And if a lot of people do actually do this, they have multiple auto blogs, one in Portuguese, one in French, one in German, right? All in running in the back end, all producing content, just like the one that I showed you before, uh, right here. And again, this works for uh, any niche. If I just type here garden, I'll show you here a, a couple of articles for the gardening niche. Again, this works for any niche, feature damage. That's, this one is AI generated, it looks quite cool. Again, all this done for you on autopilot with actual valuable videos. Again, all this done with internal links, external links, links to your products, all done on autopilot. So yeah, that's pretty cool. There's also a building links feature, which I won't dive to deep right now, but it's pretty cool as well. There's videos on the channel on how to do it. So yeah. This is how essentially you produce content that ranks. It's figuring out the best keywords, then generating the content, right? You, again, you can do all of this manually or you can just use AI, right? Again, it's a wrench. It's a technology that allows you to do all the same things, just faster, okay? Because it's all about being fast. Again, no need to use this tool. I mean, you don't need to use it. This is my tool, Full Transparency. You don't need to use it at all. But if you do, you go ahead and do things faster. Because again, I always like to explain things manually and then, of course, 
give you a way on, on, on how to automate things. So yeah, that's it. I'll leave a link for this tool down below in the description. It is freemium, so you get a couple of articles for free. Try it out, give it a go. See if it is a fit for you. If you like, let me know. If you don't like, let me know as well. And if you have any questions at all, just comment down below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.